My brothers and sisters, in the name, the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Somebody ought to say hello. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. We're excited today, this September the 24th, Sunday in downtown, beautiful Columbia, South Carolina. You know what we say, beautiful places, smiling faces. Amen. We're here at the Little Prayer Chapel celebrating service for the Epiphany Ecumenical Church. And wherever you may be, we're glad that you have joined us today because there's a message from the Lord just for you. And brothers and sisters who are here in Columbia, South Carolina, we're excited that you have come out early this morning just to take a bit of manna. Somebody say amen. amen. You know, you couldn't pick manna today. You had to get double for your trouble on yesterday. Amen. Some of you are wondering why I'm making these references, because our scripture today, we are celebrating Exodus 16th chapter, verses 2 through 15, where God delivered to the people of Israel coming out of Egypt, both quail and manna. Somebody say amen. amen. Quail and manna, bread from heaven. And uh, then we see in our psalm today, 105 verses 1 through 6 and 37 through 45, he makes reference again to that bread from heaven, that meal provided by God. Somebody say amen. amen. Now Paul goes in our third scripture in the book of Philippians, and he talks saying to live is Christ, but to die is gain. But if I live on in the flesh, this would mean fruit from my labor, and yet I shall choose, how can I tell, which is best. But for your sake, I labor on here in the flesh, that you might find joy in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now we're seeing a, 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 a theme develop here between labor and food, labor and compensation. <clears throat> now, when we go to the gospel this morning, the gospel of Matthew, the 20th chapter, and we're concentrating on verses 1 through 16. Yeah. And this is called Jesus' parable of the laborers, or the parable of the kind landowner. Somebody say amen. amen. You know the story where the landowner went out to the uh, marketplace to get workers in his vineyard and uh, he went out early in the morning and got some, <clears throat> later in the day and got others, and even later in the day he got some others. Mm -hmm. And late, 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 when there was only one hour left in the day, he got some more workers. <clears throat> the problem happened when he paid them. Right. When he called in the last and played them a denarius, and it got down to those who were called in first. And they thought they should receive more. But he paid them a denarius. And so I want to talk about all this labor and compensation. Somebody say amen. amen. And for a subject I've chosen, the economy of the new Jerusalem. Somebody right. say amen. The economy of the new Jerusalem. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, merciful and mighty, we stand before your sacred desk with a yearning, a hunger, that your word may be filling for us and fulfilling to us. We ask that the manna from heaven, that you would feed us until we want no more. O oh God, we pray that this morning we will receive a revelation that will be applicable to our lives. We ask this in the mighty and the redeeming name of Jesus the Christ. And all those who love him say, Amen. Amen. 
the subject that we addressed this morning, I want you to know I even started in my prayer. Sometimes people say, Lord, hide me behind the cross. Shrink me that I may be hidden and your word may be seen. I want you to know that God in his infinite wisdom has sought to give us an unreasonable measure of his manner and his goodness. We don't have to shrink in size and we don't have to hide behind the cross. His grace and mercy are available to us all. Come on, somebody. The economy of the new Jerusalem. You know, right now, we are in the midst of discussions about the minimum wage. Somebody say amen. amen. The minimum wage. And there's a great discussion in our Congress between the liberals and the conservatives about what is the minimum wage. What, in fact, is a living wage. In the new economy in the United States, we're wrestling with what is fair compensation for a man and a day's work? You know, so many times we say that we are a Christian nation built on Christian principles. But when we really examine the scriptures, we have to scratch our heads and wonder whether we are godly or ungodly. Somebody say amen. I want you to know that after this church service today, somebody is going to the restaurant and they are going to sit there and there will come a servant to their table. And that servant is there to do any and everything to make your meal better. And after that servant arrived, we need to examine the economy in which he operates. Well, the, con the servant that comes to your table is not making a livable wage. Well, in well. fact, he is not even making the minimum wage. Right. Most of his wages comes from the generosity of the Christian right. that he's serving. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. I'm going somewhere with this. Right. Stay with me now. Yes. Now, the servant at your table that's taking down your order, taking down your exception, taking down your requirements, taking down everything to make your stay good. Mm -hmm. yes. He is your servant for the day. And as a response to his obedience, a response to his servitude, a response to the generosity of his care, right. we are asked to give a tip. Yes. You know, the biggest complaint that non-Christians have on Sunday, if you work in a restaurant, is how the Christians tip. Somebody will say amen. amen. How the Christians tip. And somebody will say, well, he came and he served me. Or he getting paid. I don't need to give him anything. Or I'm not giving him anything. Or he, he got what he got when the man paid him that he worked for. He didn't work for me. Oh, what kind of attitude is that? Some of us uh, tip. Like uh, we put a quarter on the table, or leave a dollar on the table, and we are wondering why the people who wait on us have such an attitude. Well, they, we are not following this gospel tenet that we see right here before us. And so, well, let's examine what happened. The man who owned the vineyard paid each one of them a living wage. He paid them a full day's work. And he said, well, why? Because he examined the whole situation. Yeah. These men who were standing idly in the marketplace, having nothing to do, didn't have any land, didn't have anything to produce income, but yet they had families to take care of. Yeah. The landowner not only knew that he was a landowner, he knew that God had blessed him. Yeah. And because God blessed him, he wants to bless all those who work for him. So instead of giving them an apportioned amount of what the day called for, he gave them a whole day's wages. Why? Because he knew they needed a whole day's wages to feed their families. Am I, am I right about it? My wife was looking at me and said, yeah, don't you dare come home with a tenth of a day's wages. Somebody say amen. The children we have in our house got to eat. Yeah. They got to have clothes. They need a full day's wages. 
But Christian, we're sitting there at the table laughing, playing, and talking about how good the service was. But we don't have the decency, the generosity, the thankfulness for how God has blessed us to leave a decent tip. I never will forget I was in the restaurant and the Christian came in and ordered and he had special things he wanted. He wanted water at room temperature. He wanted unsweetened tea. He wanted his meat warm on one side but not the other. He wanted his rice separated from the vegetables so that there'd be space between so that nothing would run together. He wanted his gravy in a separate bowl. He had all of these requirements. But when he left, he said, I'm operating with God's word. And so they said, man, let's leave a tip. He pulled out a pen and wrote down a scripture so the Lord will provide. And he left no cash. Somebody say amen. I'm talking about the present economy in the United States of America. You know, sometimes we judge what we should give by what we have, not based on what we receive. We go into a restaurant, and we order the food, and we barely have enough to cover what we got. And if we have just barely enough, we have a choice to take what we have left and tip the waiter or keep it in our pocket so that we won't be completely broke. Anybody hear me? Anybody hear me? Now, if you can't afford the whole service, don't go in that restaurant. Go somewhere where you can afford it. Be aware of the economy that we're in. Now, African Americans, uh, we tip even less. We should know the burden of working and getting nothing in return. Am I right about it? When they brought us over here and treated us like chattel, We worked all day and received no wages. We received the brutality of the whip. We were beaten and raped and robbed and no tip. And so now we're in a better position. Having suffered through that, you would think that we would have the presence of mind to say when we go in, we would never treat a servant of ours like that. Oh, my God. This is the economy of the United States of America. Now, there are Christians who are complaining about those who don't work. And they quickly point to the Bible and say that uh, James said, if you don't work, you don't eat. Now, isn't it interesting that part of our Christian culture will do everything to deprive you of a job. They will do everything to discriminate against you, do everything to keep you from being employed, do everything to make you the first fired and the last hired, and then say you shouldn't eat because you didn't work. It's interesting to note that those who decide that they are Christians cannot, in the name of God, deny you work and then deny you something to eat. And then some kind people will say, well, if we can't give them work, let's at least see that they get something to eat. They came up with a program for philatelists. I know, you want to know what that is. That's a stamp collector. We call that those on the food stamp program. So they came up with the food stamp program, and those conservative Christians said, well, Those people are not working, so they should not eat. Those people have men in their houses, they should not eat. When the whole society has collaborated to stop, prevent them from having a good job. And then they create all kind of barriers to keep us from having good salaries, a decent day's work for a decent day's pay. And then we see a movement afoot where everything, all the laws, the right to work laws, the right to deny unions and associations, all the laws to deny a man a living wage. Christians, we need to look at the word of God. In the book of Deuteronomy, 
it says what is required of those who would hire people. Deuteronomy, the 24th chapter, verses 14 and 15, in the King James Version, of course, what other Christian, well, conservative Christian would absolutely have to have. It says this, Thou shalt not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be of thy brethren or of thy stranger that are in the land within thy gates. America, do you hear me? The Bible says, Thou shalt not oppress the hired servant that is poor and needy, whether he be thy brethren, black or white, or thy stranger that are in the land within thy gate. At this day thou shalt give him his hire, neither shall the sun go down upon it, for he is poor and set it his heart upon it, lest he cry against thee unto the Lord, and it be sin against thee. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm, I'm getting to the economy of the new Jerusalem. When we as Christians are denying people the right to have a meal, denying them the right to have a job, denying them the rightly place in their household as the father and the mother and the provider for a family, when we control the ins and outs of the whole marketplace and we oppress, yes. oppress those who want to work. Yes. Oh, what sins have we committed against God himself? You know, I'm thinking about the Sermon on the Mount. When people, when Jesus looked at the people and was taken with compassion. He said, oh, they are hungry. Mm -hmm. And the first Christians of the church, yeah. the first disciples said, well, send them away. Right. And Jesus said, hold up. They are hungry mm -hmm. in the new economy right. of the new Jerusalem. Yeah. The one that Jesus initiated, he said, let us feed them. Yes. And the disciples got together and they had a budget meeting. Yeah. They called in the committee of judicial affairs. Yeah. And said, we think it's fair to feed them, but we don't have it in our budget. And Jesus said, do you need a budget or do you have a God? All right. And he took up a few fish and a couple of loaves of bread and he fed the 5,000. Interestingly to note, they didn't take applications. They didn't find out who worked. They didn't decide who merited a meal. Because in the kingdom of God, it is not by our merit, but by the grace of God. The new economy of the new Jerusalem demands that we act out of the grace, the mercy, and the generosity of the God we serve. How can God bestow so much on you and you give so little to those around you? You know, I'm thinking about our scripture last week about the hired hand. Yeah. The master called him in and said, pay your debt. Pay your debt. He fell down on his knees and said, oh, master, give me more time and I will pay. And the master had what? Compassion. Yeah. He said, take your time for your debt is forgiven. The same man went out and called someone he owed. Pay your debt. Pay your debt. Oh, he fell on his knees and had the same reply. He said, give me time and I will pay you all that I owe. No, you have no more time. Cast him in the debtor's prison. Does that sound familiar? Is that not the economy that we are operating in? Is that not the government that we are living under? This is not the economy of the new Jerusalem. This is an economy constructed in hell itself. All right. When you have taken a race of people, when you have taken nationalities, when you close the gates to everyone and refuse to share that which God has given you, you are bound for the pits of hell Amen. by the word of God. You know, we are living by every means and every other wind of doctrine. But we refuse to read the word of God. 
He said the man came in 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, and they received the same wages. How many times do you go over to the chicken factory and look at all those people in boots down in a foot of water, cleaning chicken, working as hard as they can, and you go to the owner of the chicken factory, and there he is in all luxury, living good, doing good, playing golf, having a good time, but the workers are suffering. This is not the economy of Jesus Christ. This is not the workplace of Jesus Christ. This, what we call America, is wrong. Sometimes we say, oh, God, what shall we do? They've organized labor unions. They've protested. They've gone down into the marketplace. They've had marches, demonstrations. They've had work stoppages, even in the schools, the place where education is held hallowed. The teachers, the lowest paid profession. Why? Because without an education, without pouring the proper funds in education, we damned all of those people to positions of poverty. Every graduate with an inadequate education will not be able to, to afford a decent meal. Amen. There is an economy here that's out of balance. There, 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 there is something going on here that is not godly. That there is an economy operating that's not of Jesus. Sometimes we debate this between capitalism and communism. I'm going to debate it between the world's way and God's way. I, I want you to know that God has no intention for anyone to go hungry. I want you to know that in Africa where there's no water, he has a mission and a message for us that we should bring them water, water to drink. As a matter of fact, we are to bring them a well that will not run dry, that they will be able to drink from now to now on. Somebody say amen. amen. I want you to know there are places where the crops are failing, amen. where there is no crops to harvest. There is no work to be done. Are we not our brother's keeper? is the economy of the new Jerusalem one where we share the blessings of God? Sometimes we need to get a message. Yes. Harvey sent us a message. Yes. Irma brought us a message. Yes. Jose brought us a message. Yes. Gracie brought us a message. Yes. Hazel brought us a message. Yes. Katrina brought us a message. Yes. Hugo Brought us a message. Will anybody get the message that God is trying to send? That nothing that you have in a house, in land, in crops, in cars, in luxury, and entertainment is permanent. It is only given to you by the grace of God. At any moment, you can lose it all. You know, now our country has entered into an economy of tweets and insults offense and offensiveness. We are now telling people on the face of the earth, we will destroy you, we will burn you, we will wipe you off the face of the earth, and then we call ourselves a Christian nation. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, we asked how many times should we forgive our neighbor? Seven times? Seven times, 70 times. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, forgiveness in the new economy is not based on how much power you have or how much power you don't have. Amen. We uh, have put ourselves and said we're the only ones that should have nuclear weapons. Mm. And we toss that power around as if the whole world nuclear economy belongs to us. But now there are people that we've walked on, disrespected, denied food, denied work, denied visas. Now they're saying we can get a nuclear weapon too. And while we talk about destroying them, they say, well, what are we going to destroy? That little camel hut? What are we going to destroy? Those dirt roads? But if one of them should attack us, if one nuclear missile should go off here, anywhere near one of our cities, your ATM is gone. Your lights are gone. 
your refrigeration is gone. Your food is gone. Your jobs are gone. Everything that you have come to take for granted was granted for taking. The new economy of Jesus Christ requires for our own sake that we would re give an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. That those situations that we've set up where for 400 years we've enslaved races, those situations where we've denied access from Haiti, from all the Middle East, where we've denied people the opportunity to come, grow, and prosper in this promised land, when the Bible is clearly telling us in the new economy that Gentiles are welcome, that foreigners are welcome, that they are coming under the blessings of Jesus Christ, that we have been appointed and anointed to be in charge of these things. We are the landowner. We are the ones who can decide life and death. What say we Christians? Do they live or do they die? Paul says, to live is Christ. To live is to feed the poor in the new economy. To live is to give housing to the poor in the new economy. To live is to open the door for those who are shut out in the new economy. In the new economy, in the new Jerusalem, to live is for Christ. To die is a game. Somebody said, well, what about Iran and their nuclear missiles? What about Korea and their nuclear missile? What about China and their nuclear missile? What about India and the nuclear missile? What about Pakistan and the nuclear missile? What about England, France, Germany, and the nuclear missile? We have more missiles that we can destroy the earth a hundred times over. The new economy should be an economy of peace, should be an economy of love. The new economy of the new Jerusalem is not the economy of the United States of America. Right. United States of America can never be the new Jerusalem amen. with the attitude that we have. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. My brothers, my sisters, yeah. my Congress members, my House of Representatives, yeah. my Senate members, amen. my president, my vice president, my state government leaders, my governors, my House of Representatives on the local level, county council, city council, let us be the ones to develop an economy of a new Jerusalem. One where it doesn't matter whether you came to work early or late, but the kingdom of God is made available to you. My brothers and sisters, let us look at those who have no homes and open our doors. Let us look to those who have nothing to eat and open up our dining tables. Yeah. Let us look to those who have not and said, welcome, because God loves you and so do we. Right. Somebody said this is an unreasonable proposition. He said, how can I share what I have, what I've worked for, what I've done, what I've earned by the sweat of my brow? Well, let me tell you this. It was only by the grace of God that you were born in a place where the resources were, where the jobs were, where the banking system, where the houses under construction, you were born in a privileged place. Whether you're black or white, you were born in a privileged place. You were born where there's plenty of clean water. You were born where there's plenty of electricity. You were born where there's a system of banking, yeah. investment, operation, where the laws governing conflict, where there's a police, where there's an army that respects the power of government. You have been born privileged. Yeah. You have been born a landowner. Yeah. You have been born by the grace of God. The only reason you were born here is because God allowed it. Yeah, right. God put you here for a reason. Yeah, that's all right. Not to be selfish, not to be greedy, yeah. but to let the kingdom of God on earth yeah. be manifested. Yeah. That we would live out the tenements in this Bible. Mm -hmm. For God, we live. Yeah. To die is gain.
But if we live on in the flesh, it is our responsibility to bring fruit from our labor that honors the name of Jesus Christ. So you may call yourself a Christian, but you need something to measure your output. You know, just because you are in the oven doesn't necessarily mean you're biscuits. You can't be defined by what you are, by where you are. There has to be a standard where we can definitively look at you and decide whether you're a Christian by the word of God or whether you are operating under the name of Christian. If you are denying people access to this country, that's not a Christian. If you are denying people food stamps, welfare, health care, you are not a Christian. If you have decided that those who are in jail should be kept there forever, you're not a Christian. You don't measure up. Matthew 25 gives us clear direction on how we should act. This is the economy of the new Jerusalem. Oh, yeah. Brothers and sisters, someone said, well, they'll make a fool of us. They will take advantage of us. There will be those who won't work and just sit around. And so what? Is it not the hand of God that feeds us all? Amen. Is it not God who is a rewarder of all? Let us examine ourselves that we may be fit for the kingdom, the economy of the new Jerusalem. My brothers and sisters, maybe you've been caught as a nationalist. You're more concerned about being an American than you are being a citizen of the kingdom of God. Maybe, maybe you're more concerned about your political party, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or independent, than you are about being a citizen of the kingdom of God. Maybe you are, are just so much involved in your fraternal organization. Maybe you're a, a fraternity. Maybe you're a police officer. Maybe, maybe you're a member of a union. And you're more concerned about the rules and regulations and how that impacts. Let me say this to you. You need to check your real citizenship. Make sure you are a citizen of the kingdom of God. We, we do not act the way others act. We, we are not trying to be logical or reasonable. We are trying to be citizens who were loved by Jesus, yes. and we love like Jesus loved. Yes. We, we want to be in the economy. Whether you came to work at 8, 9, 12, 3, 5, you get the same pay. You are because of God's mercy and his grace. And let me tell you about sin. Some of you are washed so deep in sin, you don't know what to do. I, I know it because I've experienced it. But I want you to know whether it's 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, God can forgive you, and you are just as forgiven as the one who hadn't sinned his whole life. Wherever you are, won't you stop now and get your citizenship or papers in order? You may accept the Lord Jesus Christ and your citizenship paper so simply, all you need to do, any one of you here, stand and any one of you may accept your citizenship right here, right now, if you would just pray with me this simple prayer. Lord God, I am a sinner, and I repent from all my evil ways. Lord, I ask that you would forgive me of all my sins, and I ask that you would come and sit on the throne of my heart. Lord, please. And rule and reign and let my life be your life in your hands. And Lord, I want you to know that I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. But on the third day, he arose from the dead to come that I might have the right to everlasting life. I accept it in Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that simple prayer, Pray it with me. Just set it in your mind that you've made a reservation in heaven. That mm -hmm.